Hey guys, it's Max. Today we'll be taking a look at the new Mac Pro that was just released to order on Apple's website. I'll be sharing the best bang for the buck configuration for video editors, some things that you absolutely should upgrade right out of the get-go, and some other parts that I would say hold off on buying until we have results and some proof that it's actually worth it because I think it might not be worth it. I also wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by Squarespace, a super easy way to make an amazing website. Now, yes, I do have one ordered in. Of course, I have to test it for you guys. I have to compare it to the iMac Pro and uh, maybe we'll have to do another Hackintosh. Um, I have some parts ready and we'll see uh, if this thing is, you know, good enough to spend this much money on. Um, so initially I was quite disappointed. Um, over time, I've warmed up a bit to it, hearing a lot of other professionals' opinions, how long people keep the system. It's not completely positive just yet, uh, but we have videos that are gonna be coming out and you guys will see my full review of my full opinions. Now, with that said, this system can get crazy expensive. We're looking at about $53,000, which is absolutely crazy. That's an expensive, expensive machine. That is a lot, but that sounds crazy until you look at the competition, you look at what HP offers, you look at what Dell offers, and you look at the price point. So here is a comparable Dell system that Vadim spec'd out as close as you can. Look at that price point, $86,000. That is on sale. It says the list price is $122,000. Uh, and for 86 grand, you get a worse system. So you don't get a power supply that's as powerful. You don't get as much PCI Express port. You get a case that is not, nowhere near as nice as the all stainless steel. The graphics cards are very similar. They are NVIDIA. Uh, the processor is the same. You don't get the same amount of SSD storage. You can only get two terabytes max, not four. You only get either one or two Thunderbolt 3 ports instead of, I believe, 12 with the Mac Pro system. And you look at the price difference from 53 grand up to $86,000 for not as good as a system. Now, a similar thing goes for HP and some other builders out there. And you would think, who would spend this much money uh, you just custom build yourself a Windows PC, right? Well, that's what I would do and some of you guys would do, but a lot of companies out there that are big corporations, production places, they wanna buy something that's pre-built, they don't have to worry about it, think about it, they're not PC people, and they want a warranty and they wanna have good customer service. So that's what they pay. So let's get that kind of argument and that craziness out of the way. And I wouldn't tell really any of you guys to spend $53,000. We want the best bang for the buck. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset this configuration. Starting off with the processors, the base machine comes with eight cores. And I think for a lot of people, especially if you do H.264 or H.265 editing, that processor is gonna be just fine. But with that said, I would say that if you're already spending this much money and you're gonna have the system for a long time, I would definitely upgrade to the 12 core processor, which is $1,000 more. Now that will give you a noticeable increase in performance, especially if you're working with raw, say C200 raw, uh, maybe red raw, some stuff like that. Um, that will give you a boost going up to the next level up 16 core will also give you a boost, but you're gonna start getting diminishing returns for the money. And then above that 24, 28, I personally would not recommend. It costs a lot. And for most video editing programs and those tasks, um, you're not gonna get that much more performance. If we take a look at the iMac Pro and other Windows systems, with Intel CPUs, usually at 14 cores is kind of the sweet spot for video editing. Above that, you can actually get slower performance because the programs either cannot use all of those cores or the speeds, the actual processor base frequencies, as you can see, they get lower all the way down to 2.5 gigahertz um, once you start getting more cores because obviously you have a certain amount of electricity you can use, so it has to, each core has to work slower. Uh, and with that said, especially in the last year, we've had a lot more push towards graphics. DaVinci Resolve has been great, Premiere has made some upgrades, and Final Cut, about a month or two ago, they redid the main engine to go more off of graphics. So now, some of the tests that I've ran, instead of the CPU being at 80, 90, 100%, now it's running at 40 to 50% with the eight core MacBook Pro, and more is being done with the graphics. The sweet spot is really that, I think, 12 core processor. Now, going down to memory, this you cannot miss, either if you're doing it yourself 
or out of the box, you have to go for at least 48 gigabytes of RAM. That is because these processors are designed to have six channel memory, meaning six sticks, but the base one only comes with four. That means that your memory runs slower and your overall, your system is not gonna be running optimally or as fast. Definitely spend the 300 bucks to go to 48 gigs. Now, uh, I would tell most of you guys to upgrade the RAM yourself. I'll be talking about that in just a bit and how much money you can save doing that. But you definitely wanna do 48. Now, if you don't wanna upgrade it yourself, I think for video editing, the sweet spot is 96 gigs. It's another $700 to jump up from 48, which is a lot. And for most video editing, you're not gonna use that much uh, RAM. You're really not, even if you're doing 8K editing. Um, maybe go for 192, but do that yourself. Uh, base comes at 256 gigs. That's enough for your programs if you're not gonna keep any media on your system at all. I think for 400 bucks, it's definitely worth going to one terabyte. It's gonna be faster overall for the SSD speeds and um, this SSD is very high quality. It's gonna be very reliable. It's super quick. 400 bucks is not a bad price. Now, before we talk about graphics, which is the most important thing now for video editing, especially as of just a couple months ago, let me tell you about our sponsor, Squarespace. I have been using and recommending Squarespace for over five years now. It is by far the easiest way to get an amazing looking website, but not just amazing looking with all of their template options, but also the one that works well. It's easy easy to set it up and then you don't have to worry about upkeep, fixing issues, different plugins, uh, you know, doing SEO, security certificates, all of that is built in. That means that your website will rank well when clients and customers and anybody else goes to search for whatever you offer. And it also is just gonna work without having a bunch of headaches, you know, spending hours trying to fix your website and update it, or having to pay somebody else to do that. You can just focus on what you like doing, your business, your hobby, whatever it is, and let Squarespace handle it. And with that, it also doesn't cost very much for everything they offer. Check out squarespace.com slash max or use the link down below to sign up for a two week free trial with no credit card required. And if you go ahead and sign up afterwards, you'll get 10% off your choice of a domain or a full website package. I highly recommend Squarespace. Now taking a look at graphics, the first upgrade from that week 580X that is a shame that it's in the system costs $2,400. That was a shock to me. Now I knew it was gonna be expensive for a couple of reasons, but I didn't expect it to be that much. I thought it was gonna be 14 to $1,800, but it's $2,400. And if you're somebody that doesn't wanna upgrade your graphics cards yourself, and uh, you just wanna get the system for now and use it, and maybe think about upgrading years down the line, this is what you have to get. And for video editors, you absolutely have to do that. The 580X is decent for an iMac that costs $2,200 that comes with a six core processor. But for video editors, when you're pairing it with a system, you cannot have that base graphics. It's only enough if you just wanna display something on the screen, is say if you're doing like music production or programming uh, that doesn't really make use of graphics performance. So we have the Radeon Pro Vega 2 with 32 gigs of HBM2 memory. Now that is one reason why it is so expensive. HBM2 memory is very, very, very fast, but also very, very, very expensive. And unlike the iMac Pro, where if you get the best graphics, which is pricey, it comes with 16 gigs. This comes with 32 gigs, which is overkill. Really, if you're doing 8K video editing, I think the most that I've seen in usage is about 12 to 14. I've never seen higher or even 16 gigs. But I think Apple did this just so the fact that like if you're going to pair two of these graphics cards and they have to share the memory, they have to keep the same thing in the memory, which I think is still the way this is going to work. I could be wrong, but you won't have any issues. Now, another reason why it's so expensive is the fact that when you get this graphics module or graphics card, um, uh, it, has, it has four Thunderbolt 3 ports built into it. So you're gonna double the Thunderbolt 3 ports in your system. So combining the Thunderbolts, combining the HBM2 and that much of it, and the fact that it's the newest version of Vega Graphics, slightly more efficient with really good performance, it's expensive. Now this is the graphics card option that I selected uh, because I do wanna test it out. I wanna see how it compares to the iMac Pro and to other graphics cards that you can add in yourself. Um, and I think if you need the Thunderbolt 3 ports, the extra four ports, uh, or if you don't wanna mess with it, that is the option you should get. I think that's the best bang for the buck. Now, if you want to get better graphics, you can. Um, I would say if you're upgrading, don't get the two Radeon Pro Vega 2s. 
uh, for 5200 for the same price, do the Duo. It might be slightly slower having it on one card where it's a little bit power and thermally limited, but it should be similar performance uh, because that way you have an extra two slots available for the future. If you get the option where it's two Radeon Pro Vega 2s, um, that might be just a hair faster, but you're gonna max out all your slots, so you're gonna be limited. So don't do that. Go for the, the dual option if you wanna spend more money. But I think as far as most people, unless you're doing crazy high-end work, you're doing a ton of noise reduction, uh, you're doing different tasks that you know will absolutely just hammer the graphics, which is kind of noise reduction, <laughs> but for video editing, uh, I think most people are gonna be more than happy with the Radeon Pro Vega 2. Uh, now, for anybody, I would say don't go for the top graphics that cost you know, $10,800 above the base. Even Apple themselves, in the numbers they gave on the Mac Pro spec sheet for video editing, they didn't use that graphics card. Apple themselves, even though they can use anything they want, they used um, the, the slow, lower option, the cheaper option. That is because that is beyond diminishing returns. That is where you literally will see no difference that's there for people that are doing animation rendering where you're rendering for hours on end and all the GPU power can be harnessed for that. And that's when they show the performance from that option. But for video editors, either get the Radeon Pro Vega 2 Duo, so you have the remaining slots, or I think for most people, just the graphics option that I chose for is worth it. Now, uh, I also wanna touch on graphics that you can do yourselves and the upgrades you can do yourselves and how you can get a lot, you get more performance for a lot less money. Uh, but before that, let's talk about the afterburner cards. It's the last option on here, other than things like the wheels for 400 bucks. Well, maybe you need those, but that's, yeah, I'm not gonna comment on that. So afterburner card. The afterburner card is what Apple is describing. Now let's talk about the afterburner video accelerator card. Now I was very excited about this card when the Mac Pro was announced. Now I'm a little bit less excited for a couple of reasons. And I think that for most people out there that edit video, you should hold off and don't buy this graphics uh, accelerator, this video processing card. So the first reason is because it costs $2,000. Um, it's not insane. Like the Red Rocket cards were about $5,000, but it's still pretty expensive to do one task or just a few small tasks. Um, now, this is gonna take either ProRes and ProRes RAW and be able to process it instead of having the processor, the CPU, do it. So it's gonna take a load off of your CPU, which sounds like a great thing. Draw. Now, Apple says it can decode up to three streams of 8K video or 12 streams of 4K ProRes RAW. Now, that sounds very, very, very good. That sounds impressive as far as performance, and it is, but it's not as impressive when you take a look at the RAW specs on a 16-inch MacBook Pro spec out and see that that system can actually decode 12 streams of ProRes RAW. It can play back in multicam, and that's a laptop. That is a laptop with a much, much weaker processor than what you can get in this Mac Pro. Now, with this system, uh, that's gonna take the load off, but that's only if you're editing ProRes or ProRes RAW, and from my other disappointment is from what I could tell, it's gonna stay this way at least for a while. It means it's not gonna decode Cinema DNG RAW, not gonna decode C200 RAW, not gonna decode RED RAW either, at least for now. And I don't think it's gonna come for a while because RED came out after the announcement of the Mac Pro and said that they're rebuilding their uh, plugin for Final Cut and their whole engine actually for Mac, it's gonna use Metal. So Metal means it's gonna use the graphics card, not this Afterburner card. And that makes sense because anybody will be able to play back AK Red Raw on a laptop uh, with a good graphics card like the new 16-inch Mac Pro Pros, uh, just like they can with the NVIDIA graphics cards using their own Red Cine X program. Um, well, with that acceleration that they added. And not everybody's gonna be able to use an afterburner card. So that means that unless you're somebody that works with ProRes all the time, you either shoot in ProRes or you take your ProRes footage and you transcode it, which this card will speed it up, or you export to ProRes all the time, you're not gonna get much benefit, if any benefit at all. And the reason why I'm telling people not to get it is because the CPUs in the system can handle ProRes RAW really easily. Even 8K ProRes RAW, probably multiple streams of it without having this dedicated card. 
And now with these new video editing programs, especially with Final Cut, but also Premiere and DaVinci Resolve, they're using a lot more graphics. In the latest version of Final Cut, the new engine in Final Cut uh, has been redone to use Metal, which means redone to use the graphics. And from what I've seen, on a 8-core MacBook Pro, in some of the tests, I went from having 80 to 100% CPU usage down to 40 to 50. So a lot less of the processor is being used, a lot more of the graphics. That means we also have a lot more CPU remaining left over for things like playing back ProRes or ProRes RAW. Hold off on that, see how it performs. If you see that your CPU is being maxed out when you're working with this footage, you're editing ProRes RAW 8K in multiple streams and you're seeing, hey, it's kind of stuttering, okay, then go and add it on later, but I don't think it is worth it just for now. Now let's talk about how you can save a whole ton of money if you know you wanna buy a Mac Pro for whatever your reason is, but you don't wanna spend the crazy prices that Apple uh, is charging for a couple of these. I mean, even though it could make sense compared to competition, it's still a lot of money. You can do some things yourself to get a killer system that's gonna be upgradable, it's gonna have legit Mac OS, it's gonna work and not spend an insane amount of money. So first off is RAM. So you have to go for 48 gigs because you need six channel, but Apple charges 300 bucks. If you wanna do that yourself, you can actually go on Amazon and you can get the same DDR4, 293 megahertz, RDIM, ECC for server memory, and you're gonna spend 120 bucks to get that instead of $300. Now, if you're going for 48, I just say, you're, say that you're already spending a lot of money, just get it from Apple. Uh, but if you're somebody, say, you wanna get 192 gigs, which is gonna be more than enough for everybody. Even Apple only went up to 384 for all of their performance numbers that they list on their website, because above that is just crazy overkill. But uh, if you wanna get 192, it costs three grand from Apple, and that's a great point if you don't wanna be limited at all for years and years and years. But you can buy that yourself, from Amazon, it's gonna cost you, I believe, about $1,000 or slightly less right now from them. And of course, this system's designed to be upgradable, so it's very easy to do. We'll be doing a video on how to do that just in case you wanna see that. So that's a way you can save $2,000 right away. The other best way to save money, if you don't wanna spend $2,400, I would say go out and buy a Vega 64 graphics card for yourself, or maybe even better, a Radeon uh, 7 graphics card. So Apple does sell cables, like you can put any graphics card you want into here, and Apple has this uh, cable kit, it's actually Belkin makes it $70, and you need those cables if you wanna add in your own cards, it plugs right in, and then here we see a picture where uh, we had to get power from the motherboard and we have a 5700 XT graphics card there. That is not a bad graphics card, uh, but I would say if you wanna get something that's gonna be a little bit better performance, the Vega 64 slightly better and that costs about the same price, or my best option is the Radeon 7. Uh, it's $600, it is gonna be very similar performance to the graphics card that Apple's charging $2,400 for, just slightly slower. And we also have HBM2 memory, unlike the 5700. Um, and that's 16 gigs, which is more than enough for almost everybody, and it's 600 bucks. Of course, you don't get the Thunderbolt 3 ports in addition, but not everybody needs that. And don't forget, you have all those PCI slots. So for those of you guys that want the best performance for the money, if you're buying the graphics cards yourself, get two of these suckers. You're gonna be looking at $1,200, half the price that Apple charges for basically their version of one of these graphics cards, and both of them will work out of the box. The Final Cut will use them just fine. DaVinci Resolve, you know, those programs, you can select both graphics cards, and you're gonna get a killer system for not that much more money. So what did we learn overall? Well, you're gonna be spending roughly $10,000 for the best bank for the buck configuration. But if you're somebody that's on a tighter budget, but you do wanna buy a Mac, I would go for the A-Core model then, 48 gigs of RAM, put in the graphics card yourself, and choose the SSD option, and you're gonna be spending around $7,000, uh, which is expensive, but that is not that bad compared to other workstations from other companies and where you don't get Mac OS, you get a Windows system. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, once again, big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys are subscribed if you guys wanna see actual tests and performance from this system. And if you're interested in Afterburner, I wanna see if it works externally as well. So if you wanna connect a laptop to it, I think that's where it makes a lot more sense, where you don't have as much CPU power as you do on one of these 
you know, big Mac Pro systems. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next video.